So I have these two videos that have kind of blown up on my channel and I'm interested to look at the difference between the two because they both are about the same subject. Both of them are on a topic that's kind of a trending topic and uh, specifically it's a review of an app called M. Taylor. M. Taylor does a ton of ads so obviously there's a ton of search volume with people looking that up saying does this work? Is it any good? I use their service. I still use their service. Um, and my first video that I posted about them was from when they first came out and when I first started using them. And then about a year and a half later, I posted another one, kind of an updated video. And I think that it's interesting to compare the two because they're very different videos about the same subject. The biggest difference is the, the quality of the second video. I think I over color corrected it so it looks a little muddy, but in general, I you know actually staged my background. You can see I'm in a closet with the clothes that I'm talking about uh, all around the background. It's 17 minutes long, which I'll talk about in a minute why that is. And then the other video is about five minutes long and it's my normal kind of filmmaking, random, there's like a hope thing back there. It was the wall behind me and I didn't put much thought into that at all. What was behind me when I was making those videos? So I made a spreadsheet here to show the difference between the two. The first is the does the M. Taylor app work and the second one is the honest M. Taylor review. The first one was much more positive than the second one. The second one I had some shirts blow through the elbow mostly because they were just a little bit too tight on the elbow. They were too fitted and I hadn't been washing them properly so it was partially my fault. And I also had ordered pants so I wanted to talk about those and I they'd gotten it like really wrong the first time. But then through the, re the return process they got it right the second time. So it was kind of a review of more of the service than I had an opportunity to try the first time. And by the way, if you're interested in checking out M. Taylor, there is a link in the description that this shirt is not an M. Taylor shirt. This one is not fitted really properly. It's not too bad. This one I just got from a thrift store, but I still have uh, one of their heavy duty shirts. So if you ever order, if you do order from them, either order pants, their pants are pretty great, or order the heavy duty fabric if you want something that's gonna last. The heavy duty fabric was the second shirt I ordered that was 25 months ago now, and it's still holding up really, really well, and it's one of my favorite shirts. But anyway, I didn't want it to count that, you know, these two things, these the, the, the distance of time between the two videos, I wanted to look at how they actually compared as if they were both uploaded at the same time. Obviously, there's plenty of factors that go into that, but, so the long video is this Honest M. Taylor video, and you'll notice that this is adjusted for time. I just multiplied this times like 2.2, which brought it up to how long, what it would be if it kind of continued on the same trend to match up with this, the first video. And the view count is not that different. The watch time is crazy different, and there's more new subs and more comments on the second video. So. A lot of people still think that YouTube and Facebook, the idea is to make as short of videos as possible. But a long time ago, YouTube switched over to using watch time as its primary um, metric. When it's showing you metrics and on the back end, it really prioritizes watch time because it wants people on the site for longer. It doesn't care how many clicks you get on your video, it cares how long people are watching your video. So funny, a lot of the comments on this second video, it's funny, there's good ones and bad ones and it just goes to show that it doesn't matter because you know, I'm making a little bit of referral. Um, I get like a little bonus every time anyone signs up uh, and I actually use the service so that's really helpful for me to save some money on clothes that I wear because I have to wear nice clothes to work. But to try to actually make the video a little more interesting, the second one, because it was going to be so much longer, I didn't want to just make it me talk. Like this first one is literally just me talking to the camera. I don't add any effects. I don't, I don't think I even show inside the app at all. I kind of, you know, I'm talking and I'm sh talking with my hands and showing what I'm talking about. But that's it. It's about five minutes. And the average view time on that is one minute and 47 se seconds where the average due time on the other one is three minutes and 40 seconds. That's almost the whole, like, that's, the percentage is less, but it's almost the whole length of the, second, the first video. So you can see how having longer videos is beneficial because you're getting, first of all, I mean, on branding aspect, just you're getting in front of people and 
they're seeing your face and they're interacting with you longer, which then builds rapport with them. So then if they're ever likely to be in a situation where they might buy from you, they're more likely to do so. In the YouTube case, if they see a video with my face, they're more likely to click on my video. If they meet me in person, they're more likely to recognize me just because they've spent more time with me. And it works the same way across the board. What I think is really cool is that the view count can be pretty much identical. I mean, and obviously this actually is a little bit higher, I think because the timing was a little bit better and I think I'm providing more value in the second video. The second video is a lot better. What I was saying is, obviously my attention span is crazy all over the place. What I am saying is the second one, I didn't just stand there. I did just stand there most of the time, but then I added little comment cards. I added a bit of humor throughout it, kind of commenting on the bad <laughs> reviews or the bad comments I had got on the first ones, which I thought were really funny. Kind of like this one, basically a bunch of people called me it. A couple people, like three people out of all of the comments, a couple people called me like a shill or something for the company and it's obviously a scam and I'm paid, whatever, and I just kind of explained to them how referral codes work and that like I'm not getting money necessarily, I'm just getting some discount towards a thing that is on their site. So if I didn't actually like their site, then reviewing them and referring people to them would be pointless because all I'm getting is their product. But so this video is a lot more engaging, so obviously it's gonna keep people for a lot longer. But the number one comment that's negative has nothing to do with any of the other stuff this time. It's all 17 minutes. There's no way I'm gonna watch 17 minutes. And what I think is funny is plenty of people watch 17 minutes or at least five minutes or six minutes of it compared to one minute of the other one. That's a pretty significant difference. And if I had ads on this, I could put ads beginning, middle and end so I'd get even more ad revenue. That's not the point of that video. The interesting thing is is the first video I was very positive about M. Taylor. I didn't criticize them at all because I hadn't used them long enough to criticize them. The second one was right after I had torn those shirts, so I was very, very critical at, about them. And it wasn't until like maybe nine minutes in where I started explaining some of the good things where, like you saw, most people didn't view that far. So I realized that like, especially when you are hoping to maybe make some referral cash-ins or whatever, like people to, to actually use your referral code so then I could buy some more shirts for work, you know? If, I, if you wanna do something like that, then you want to make sure you're mentioning it early in the video and you're maybe mentioning the positive things and then focusing on the negatives and then maybe going back to kind of the neutral things. I, those are the takeaways from these two videos, two videos about the same exact thing, both that have done really well on my channel because they're on a trending topic. And I thought it was really interesting as a marketing specialist to look at those two things. And I hope if you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur or something, maybe even an artist trying to get your name out there, this kind of information shows you more than someone just saying, you should make longer videos because I say you should. But like, this is some hard evidence and there's plenty more out there. I'm sure your recommended feed is full of them now that you watch this video. There's plenty of information out there. Watch time is more important than the actual views. On Facebook, that still holds true. People think that, oh, uh, because of the way people are using Facebook and using it, uh, scrolling through, it doesn't matter. First of all, people on YouTube, when they click on the video, can see how long the video is. So it does maybe hurt you a little bit if people are looking for a quick video to watch so that your video is longer. Where on Facebook, a lot of the times people are, it's auto playing on people scrolling. So they don't even know how long the video is until it starts. Usually by that time they're committed and a lot of times they'll watch a pretty long portion of video. I get longer uh, watch times once people watch past maybe like six seconds or so because those are the people that are just kind of scrolling seeing it. I get longer watch times after that than I do on YouTube. So it's still beneficial to put up long videos, which I'm just learning this because I was posting shortcutted versions of my videos on Facebook trying to direct people to YouTube. And what I've realized is that you should just post it to Facebook, post the whole thing to Facebook. You get, it's different, the audience is different and there's a little bit more shareability, but there's less searchability. So it's a beneficial thing to post things to both. Content like this, that's kind of a review of something or answering a question, those things do much better on YouTube. Things that are a little more entertainment focused or news focused, those things do better on Facebook. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you're interested in talking about marketing sometime, I'm gonna put my uh, marketing website page down in the description. I have a calendar app and you can just schedule a call with me for free. And we can talk about some marketing. If you maybe have a business and you just wanna ask some questions, uh, feel free to do that. Thanks for watching, bye.